Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulihi al-ameen Wa alihi wa ashabi ajmain ila yawmiddin A'uzu billahi minash shaytanir rajim Wassamaa banaynaaha Bi aydin wa inna lamusiyoon Wal arza farashnaaha fani'mal maahidoon Wa min kulli shayin khalaqna zawjaini la'allakum tazakkaroon Fafirru ila Allah Inni lakum minhu nazirun mubin Wa la taj'alu ma allahi lahan akhir Inni lakum minhu nazirun mubin Kazalika ma atal ladhina min qablihim min rasulin illa qalu sahirun aw majnun Atawasu bi Balhum qawmun ta'gun Fatawalla anhum wa ma antum bimalum Wa zakkir fa inna zikra tanfa'u al-mu'minin Wa ma khalaqtu al-jinna wal-insa illa liyabudun صدق الله العلي العظيم رب إشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي إن أريد إلا الإصلاح مستطاط وما توفيق إلا بالله عليه توكلت وإليه أنيب اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته it gives me immense pleasure and I consider this to be a privilege and honor that on a Sunday morning I am addressing and sharing my views with all of you. I need to compliment all of you for having spared your valuable time in being here today morning. Generally Sunday morning is a lazy day where people feel a little relaxed take things easy, particularly for the youth to come for a Sunday morning program at 11 o'clock is quite, quite an ordeal. But I'm sure you are a different group altogether. You are the people whom I understand with your participation that you are serious about Islam, that you wish to know, understand, and try to develop yourselves both materially and spiritually and turn out as a true believer in the actual sense of the word. Your participation gives a clear message of this. As I a compliment to you, in the same breath I would like to beseech and supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord Almighty, to make this program productive, beneficial, and to be of immense gain to each one of us who have spared our valuable time <clears throat> in being here today morning. Brothers and sisters, Whatever I'm going to share with you today morning, I'm sure is nothing new. It's going to be nothing new. But as we keep cleansing our physical bodies, so also cleansing and purification of the soul also needs to be done on a periodical basis so that there is no dirt accumulating on the soul which may lead to corruption and therefore purification of the soul and the nourishment of the soul also is equally important or I would say even more important than our physical purification. And that is why these programs are being conducted on a periodical basis so that it will be a stark reminder and it will be a moment of introspection and self-assessment to each one of us as to where we are, where are we heading towards, and what is our objective and purpose of life. Brothers and sisters, the topic given is Fafirru il Allah. Rush towards Allah. And this particular verse is found in Surah number 51, Surah Dariyat. Towards the end of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
in the last ruku begins with by saying and that is the verse which i recited before you the translation is as follows and the skies we have built it and we have, we hold vast power over it and the earth we have spread it and how excellent we have spread it and everything we have created in pairs so that you may seek admonition fafiru ila allah inni lakum minhu nazirum mubin so rush towards allah verily i am to you a warner clear and do not set up with allah other gods verily i am to you from him a warner clear does not came to those from before them any messenger but they said that is the people said he is a magician or a mad person or a person possessed have they instructed each other with this nay there are a people who have transgressed limits fatawalla anhum fama anta bimalum so turn away from such people so not you are blame worthy wazakir fa inna zikra tanfa'ul mu'minin then verily remind for reminder always benefits the people wa ma khalaqtul jinna wal insa illa liya'budun and not i have created mankind and jinnat except that they should be subservient to me that they should worship me or that they should serve me brothers and sisters this was the verse which i recited and these verses are pointing towards all the three ish aspects tauhid risalat and akhirat and in between you will find this word fafiru ila allah kami allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the mesmerizing mysterious and a very great kingdom and dominion and universe which he has created and he says we have created this entire universe with our own hands and we have just not created it but we hold tremendous control and power over exercising the affairs of the universe we are the ones who dispose the affairs of the universe we have total total control over it allah subhanahu wa taala is omnipresent and omnipresent omnipotent and he has wallahu ghalibun ala amrihi he has total control over his affairs walakin aksar an nas la yalamun but the people do not know similarly allah says this earth farashnaha we have spread it like a carpet farashnaha we have spread it like a carpet and how excellent we have spread it and everything that we have created is in pairs you name it everything is in pairs there is night there is day there is darkness there is light in gender there is a male there is a female there is a positive there is a negative there is a north pole there is a south pole there is east there is west in every single creation of allah subhanahu wa taala it is found in pairs and allah subhanahu wa taala when he says everything is created in pairs it clearly indicates that this world in which we live in also has a pair and that pair is the akhirah and only when everything is paired then only the very purpose and objective of its creation gets fulfilled otherwise it's an incomplete creation if there were only men folk in this world there would be no procreation there will be no succeeding generations coming and only when allah has created mankind into man and woman that this world exists and that very purpose of allah creating the species called man that objective is fulfilled and 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 attained likewise in every creation of allah subhanahu wa taala if there would not be 
sparing of Allah's creation, none of those creation will have any value and it would become extinct over a period of time. Likewise, when Allah has created this earth, then definitely the pair for this earth is the Akhirah. Third point which Allah talks about is Risalat. Allah says, there has never been a time when messengers were sent to the people to convey the message and the revelations which were sent down on them to guide men as to how they should live their life in this world and to make corrections in their misbehavior and misconduct. There has never been a messenger who had not been given negative labels. Some were called Sahir, some were called Majnoon, some were called Kahin. And needless to say, that Prophet also was not spared in this man, in this matter. Sometimes we feel very embarrassed to even mention those labels given to such noble souls who have been sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, been nominated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, selected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide man. And they all did it without any motive. Tirelessly and fearlessly they conveyed the messages of Islam before the people in uncompromising terms. And for all the hard work that they put in, they were harassed, persecuted, given such labels and their lives were made miserable and with some prophets they were even killed. But the prophets fulfilled their prophetic mission for which they were sent into this world. And further Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, continue to remind the people for reminder always benefits. And that is why these programs are conducted so that it's a reminder for once again to all of us. As I told you in the beginning, none of these verses, none of these explanations which I'm giving you are new to you. You may be wondering, oh, these are all regular things only which are being told. But the natural tendency of man is to forget. Why do we need to pray five times a day? We can only pray once if we have to remember Allah. That is because we are told to be reminded of the fact that we are his true servants and slaves. And even a few hours can create that forgetfulness, can dilute that faith in order that this faith is always enhanced. In order that this faith gets, faith gets a boost. And this faith which keeps fluctuating and keeps dipping is once again given that is re-energized so that our faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remains constant. And the moment it dips, it's once again raised. So this is a natural phenomena of a man. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't worry about the people. You convey the truth before them. And the very fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created you and I and mankind and jinnat to whom he has given them the freedom to obey or to disobey, to accept or to reject, to be obedient or disobedient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's purpose of creating them is that they should serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not have created mankind and jinnat except that they should be subservient to me, that they should serve me, that they should worship me alone. 24 into 7, every breath of our life, we should be adopting the attitude of obedience and servitude before him. And we are not free to live our lives the way we want. We have to go by that Commandments of Allah and the teachings of the beloved Prophet in order that we may be considered as true believers in the eyes of Allah. And in the entire process of Allah's creation of this universe, in the entire process of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminding you that this world is not the end and be end of all, but there is an akhirat, another new world which is awaiting you after you transit from this world and a day of resurrection is a sure reality. 
you and i may reject it but does not does, does not change the reality and the truth and only for conveying this message of tawhid and akhirat prophets and messengers were sent from time to time to convey this message in categorical terms and remind man that he stands accountable before allah and for this he needs to connect allah so with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a manner as he should and for this he should not waste time for death can strike you and i at any point there is no guarantee that we will see another morning another evening or the next hour death is waiting to snatch us away from this world and we have been hearing the death news of several of our friends relatives particularly during this pandemic even more often than what we used to hear, hear earlier is this not a stark reminder that our turn can any time be next we are ready with the boarding passes waiting in the launch only for the announcement to come and the moment the announcement is made we have to board when that announcement is going to be made we do not know but we need to be prepared and that is what fafirul allah means rush towards allah don't waste your time this life is temporal this life is short kullu nafsin zaiqatul maut inna ma tuwaffuna wujurakum yawm al qiyamah faman zuhzi an an nar wa udkhila al jannata faqad faz wa mal hayatu ad dunya illa mataul ghurur allah says every soul shall taste death there's nobody who can escape from death not even the prophets and allah has used the word every soul shall die it doesn't say allah says every soul shall taste death that moment of dying can either be a sweet moment or a bitter moment sweet moment for those true believers who lived a life responsibly in this world always having the fear of accountability before allah for such people who did a lot of good deeds keeping their entire life focused on the success of the hereafter for them that death is going to taste sweet and for those souls and those people who led neglect neglectful lives who turned away from allah who is their creator who disobeyed him morning and evening and they were only encompassed and encircled with sins throughout their lives for them their taste of death is going to be very pathetic and very agonizing and very bitter that is why allah says kullu nafsin zaiqatul maut and all your deeds whatever you have done will all be paid to you on the day of qiyamah the good will be recompensed to the best of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he decides and the sinners will be punished by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is justice which will prevail but the actual success which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeks seeks in that verse in surah al imran faman zuhzi an an nar wa udkhila al jannata faqad faz whoever is removed from the hell fire and admitted into paradise that is true success that is true success we should not be complacent of this matter and take it lightly oh we are muslims oh we are the umma of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam definitely the prophet will intercede on our behalf and no matter we do a little bit of sins or mistakes here and there or commit faults nothing is going to happen everything is perfectly all right this was the attitude condemned by allah subhanahu wa taala for the jews walan tamassan an naru illa ayyaman madudat never shall touch us fire even if the fire touches us it's only going to be for a limited period of time nanu abda allahi wa ahibbahu they said we are the children of allah and his beloved nothing is going to go wrong just as a reminder to you and i this fire which we utilize in this world and which we see is only 170th of that actual fire of its intensity which is going to be in the yawm al qiyamah and 70 does not exactly mean 70 it means many many times more but allah has cooled that fire 70 times means n number of times before sending it into the world in the swiss world for our usage that fire of the hell is going to be highly intense khabat zidnahum sayira the moment it reduces its intensity allah says we will increase the intensity once again can you even imagine to be in the hell fire even for a moment 
Mama asbar hum al nar. How will they tolerate? How will they endure upon that fire? Allah Himself is asking. Don't take this fire lightly, and that's why we constantly keep reciting in surah in that in that beautiful comprehensive dua which Allah has, Allah has taught us. We find it in surah Bakhara. Wa minhu man yakhulu. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasnatan wa fil akhirati hasnatan wa qina azab an nar wa qina azab an nar. We also keep reciting Allahumma ajirna min an nar. Allahumma ajirna min an nar. What is all this? Why are we told to keep reciting it so often? Because that fire is not an ordinary fire. But whoever is saved and removed from that fire, whoever does not get into Jahannam and gets into paradise directly, that is true success. For certain people, they will be sent first to Jahannam until all their sins are cleansed and only then Allah will purify them and then they will be admitted into paradise. But we need to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely shedding a few tears from our eyes and plead to Him that, O oh Allah, Admit us into paradise without accountability, and that is what Allah has ibn Isab and Yasira means. When Hazrat Aisha asked ask the Prophet, What is the meaning of Allah has ibn Isab and Yasira, which is doing dua? Prophet said, Oh Aisha, this dua means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should not question us and send us into paradise directly. For if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were to ask us even a single question, we will be doomed and destroyed. So without going into Jahannam, getting admitted directly into paradise, that is actual success. And Allah is again re reminding in that last portion of that dua, of that verses, "Pamal hayatu dunya illa mataul furur." This life of this world is nothing but a deception. It's only a drama. Don't get beguiled. Don't become a victim. Don't fall into its trap. Everything in this world has been made attractive. Wal banina, wal khanatiran, mukhantarati, mina zahabi, wal fizza, wal khail al musawamati, wal annami, wal hars, zalika mataul hayatu dunya, wallahu in the husn al ma'ab. Allah has enlisted all those attractions and those things which are covetous in nature for a human being, women, ch children, hordes of wealth, of gold and silver, branded horses, what we call as branded cars today, and cattle, and ranches, and properties and agricultural fields, all these are attractions of this world. Allah says, be careful. What is near Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best. And for, for whom will be that best? For those who let God conscious lives. Brothers and sisters, when we say rush towards Allah, means we need to reconnect with Him. If there has developed a distance between Allah and I, try to bridge that distance. Let's get close to him. Let us create the nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us pray to him. Let us bow and prostrate before him. Let us seek forgiveness from him. Before the time runs out. When is the time going to run out? Nobody knows. And death comes and snatches you away unawares. We need to be prepared for this. And that few verses of Surah Ali Imran, which Brother Yasir recited today morning, tells us, Wasariu ila maqfiratin. And Surah Hadid, Allah says, Sabihu ila maqfiratin min rabbikum. Both the words Sariu is also mentioned, Sabihu is also mentioned. Sariu means hasten. Don't waste time. Whatever has happened has happened. Seek forgiveness. Move quickly. Reconnect yourself with Allah at the earliest. Because there's a Jannat which is waiting for you. And for whom is that paradise waiting for? With that little muttaqeen. It has been prepared for the God conscious people, for the people who are muttaqeen, who are God fearing. And who are those God fearing? Allah gives a complete list. Allah those who spend in affluence as well as in adversity, those who control their anger, and those who pardon and forgive the people, and Allah loves such muhsinin, good doers. Wallazina ida falu fahishatan, o zalamu and fusam, zakarullah, fasta firu, lizunubim, oman yakfiru zunuba. 
illallah wa man yaghfiru dhunuba illallah wa lam yusiru ala ma ala ma yamalun allah says those people who commit a sin or commit any act of immorality or lewdness immediately they think of allah zakarullah the thought of allah comes into their mind then they seek forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they know that nobody can forgive their sins except allah and they do not justify or persist upon what they did such people are the muttaqin and in surah hadid allah says wasabihu ila maghfiratin mir rabbikum race with one another compete with each other so you'll find the words fafiru you'll find the words sariu you'll find the words sabihu all these are those particular terms which allah has used in the quran to tell man particularly the believers not to waste time time in this world is running out you are like a block of ice melting under the sun with no insulation available and it is just melting off when is that last piece of ice going to melt and your register will be closed and your life in this world will terminate nobody in this world has not because this is the knowledge of the unseen which nobody knows except allah let us not be complacent brothers and sisters let us understand that we have been sent into this world with a responsibility and why should we worship allah why should we fear allah is allah someone whom we who is scary no because of our love to allah because allah himself says ya ayyuhan nasu budu rabbakum allazi khalaqakum wal ladina min qablikum la allakum tattaqun o oh, mankind be subservient and worship allah because he is the one who created you and also those from before you so that you may become god fearing and why should we become god fearing because it's allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is providing everything for us in this world الذي جعل لكم الارض فراشا والسماء بناء وانزل من السماء ماء فاخرج به من الثمرات رزقا لكم فلا تجعلوا لله اندادا وانتم تعلمون الله says he is the one who made the sky as a canopy and the earth as a carpet and he is the one who sends down rain from the sky and from it he brings out fruits and your vegetation as provision for you and sustenance for you so therefore when you know that everything is provided by allah you have come from allah you will go back to him and he has made your lives comfortable smooth and convenient should not we thank allah should not we abide by the teachings and the commandments of allah and his messenger so that we may be successful in this world and the hereafter ultimately at the end of the day allah does not gain anything by punishing us ma yaf'alu allah bi azabikum in shakartum wa amantum allah says what does allah gain by punishing you if you are going to be grateful and you are going to have faith and belief in allah these are the only two things which allah is asking shukar and iman for all that allah has given us and allah has given us countless bounties more than what we expected and more than what we deserved he has empowered us and he has bestowed and conferred on us innumerable and countless bounties this very health which allah has given us this comfortable and peaceful sleep in the night that we get this intelligence this wife these children this wealth this shelter you name it wa in tawaddullah wa in tawaddu ni'matullah la tu so if you want to count the favors of allah you can't count it when there will be no other shade available the heat will be intense because the sun will be brought very close and in the hadith we get to know that some people will be sweating to the extent that the sweat will cover almost up to their heads and for some the sweat will be up to their navel and for some up to the hip and for some up to the knees and some up to the ankles that will be a day of intense heat and there will be no shade available but there are seven categories of people to whom allah subhanahu wa taala will grant them the shade under the throne of allah number 1 imamun adil a just ruler a just ruler one who always uses his position to do justice and justice is one word which can be considered an alternative word for islam because islam is a religion of justice and fairness because shirk is injustice tauhid is justice justice towards allah justice towards fellow beings being just to allah being just to the fellow beings and any form of injustice is intolerable in islam so the first point which allah mentions is imamun adil number 
shababun shababun nasha fi ibadatillah that young person those youth who spend their youth in the service of allah in the service of islam youth brothers and sisters is a very very challenging phase of one's life where your energies your strength your capabilities your potentials are at the maximum and you just have to decide and you can do it but we need to harness and we need to channelize in the right way in the path of islam in the service of islam in the cause of islam because allah subhanahu wa taala loves the ibada the worship and the service towards islam by the youth than he loves of the old people but these are this, this is the stage of life when there are several attractions and distractions and shaitan and shaitan plays truant during this particular period of time and that's the period of time when we need to keep ourselves under control focused and know that this is a test unto me and a test to my faith and i should not allow or compromise it in any manner at all so allah subhanahu wa taala and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said in this particular thing those youth who have spent or devoted their youth in the service of allah because this is the question also which allah is going to ask on the day of qiyamah how did you spend your youth whether we have spent it in the in obedience to allah and his servitude or have we spent it in rebellion and disobedience three third category rajulun qalbuhu muallaq bil masjid that man that young person whose heart is always attached to the masjid of course this is pandemic so i'm not going to insist that you should go to the masjid now each one has his own take on this has a has his own call to take on this matter but develop the habit of performing the five times salah in congregation in the masjid because masjid is the house of allah masjid is the qalb of the mohalla it is the heart <clears throat> just as the heart pumps blood throughout the body the masjid pumps spiritualism throughout the mohalla and where will you get the pure blood available in the heart go to the masjids often serve the cause of the masjid keep the masjid clean visit the masjid often so allah's prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said his heart is always attached to the masjid heart is attached to the masjid in such a way that the moment he comes out of the masjid he again thinks when should i come back he always attached this is the third category of people who will be under the shade of the throne of allah four rajulani tahabba fillah tama alayhi wa tafarraha alayh those two people who loved each other for the sake of allah who joined with one another for the sake of allah and separated from each other for the sake of allah now as an organization as a youth who belong to various organizations and institutions you join together for what for for the common good to serve the community to seek the pleasure of allah to promote good to enjoy good and forbid evil to do the work of dawa to do the work of social service and for many other good causes you you assemble you join you participate and you meet each other and for the sake of allah you separate and go about completing your responsibilities and assignments so those two men who met for the sake of allah and who separated for the sake of allah they will find this place in on the cause of islam collectively individualism has no place in islam number 5 because of paucity of time i'm going a little quick i'm sure you are catching up number 1 is imam un adil number 2 is those two youth sorry those youth who spend their youth in the service of islam number 3 is that particular person whose heart is connected with the masjid always number 4 is those two young men who joined together for the sake of allah and separate for the sake of allah and who loved each other for the sake of allah number 5 zakarullah qaliyan fa faza aynahu that believer who in privacy who in isolation cries before allah recalling the sins which he or she have committed and what could be a better time then tahajjud when everybody is sleeping when there is silence all over you and allah alone 
go down in prostration, lift your hands. Allah says, during the sahar, during the time of tajud, they seek forgiveness of Allah. And these are the people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls them as the true believers and as Ibadul Rahman. And those are the people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised them paradise. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that particular individual, he or she, crying before Allah with tears flowing down from the eyes, seeking forgiveness and pardon from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number six. Rajalun datum imrata zata hasabin vajimalin fakala inni akhafullah. That youth, that young man who is invited for a lewd or immoral act by a lady of higher status and a beautiful lady asking for her desires to be gratified and fulfilled. But that youth says, Sorry, I will not accept your invitation because I fear Allah. And what could be a better example than in the life of Yusuf? 17, 18 year old lad. A teenager, handsome personality, everything that a youngster can ask for. And the lady of the house, that beautiful lady of the house is inviting him. And he says, Rabbi, Rabbi Ahasana Maswai, my Lord has given me such an excellent place of stay. Innahu la yuhibbu zalimin, la yuflihu zalimun. The, never will be successful those people who displease Allah and who wrong Allah and who are unjust to Allah's Favors which he has conferred on me. This is the words which Yusuf al-Islam utters from his mouth. Today there is so much of attractions. The women are ill-clad. They are tempting. They are attractive. But can you and I hold our emotions? Can you and I, for the sake of Allah, sacrifices for the greater rewards awaiting us in the hereafter? That's the challenge. And anybody who comes under this category will be under the shade of the throne of Allah. Seven, last. That person who gives charity so silently that if one hand gives, the other hand does not get to know. And for this, Allah is using, the Prophet used the word, وَرَجُلٌ تَصَدَّخْ بِسَرَقَةٍ فَأَخْفَاهَا حَتَّى لَا تَعْلَمَا شِمَالُهُ مَا يُنْفِخُ يَمِينُهُ That means giving the charity silently without making a hue and cry or noise about it. Without looking for name, fame or glory. Allah says in Surah Bakhra, if you disclose your charity, it is okay, but that's a very big challenge because you have to keep your intentions pure. But if you are going to hide it and give it, then that is better for you, Allah says. That is better for you. So seven categories of people who will be under the shade of the throne of Allah. Brothers and sisters, as youth, many of these particular points cover the youth. Whether it be an Imam Adil, whether it be the youth who work for the cause of Islam and spend the youth in the cause of Islam, whether it be those people who are connected themselves with the masjid and whether it be the youth who meet each other for the cause of Islam and separate each other for the cause of Islam, whether it be the youth who is invited by a lady to perform an lewd act and says, sorry, I fear Allah. All these are mostly connected with youth. And if you can, I can carry this take home message for this session. I think the session will truly really, really to be believed to be beneficial. And in terms of our character, that's the most important part of Fafir Ruel Allah, brothers and sisters. What is our character today? We need to look into it very, very seriously. I'm going to run through another second hadith. And with that, I'm concluding my program. Abu Zar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, a very devoted, pious, and most loving to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he approached Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day and said, Oh Prophet, kindly give me some advice. Prophet Salsam first told him, fear Allah. And we have seen several, several verses of what is God consciousness, what is piety, these verses of Surah Al Imran, which we recited today. Then, it's a long verse wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they give their wealth for the to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure. And for those who ask in, in the freeing of the bondages, and establish salah and give zakah. And who fulfill their promises when they make a promise. And those who are steadfast in adversity and affliction and at the time of crisis and tension and panic. These are the truthful people and these are the God conscious people. Like this, we have several, several verses 
relating to piety ya ayyuhalladhina amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun o oh, those who believe fear allah as he should be feared and let not death come to you except in the state of islam when the sahaba asked what does this mean haqqa tuqatihi prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said fattakhullaha ma istata'tum min surat taqabun allah says fear as much as you can keep away from evil keep away from the displeasure of allah as much as you can hold your emotions keep your emotions under control for the rewards of this is paradise nothing short of paradise wal aqibatu lil muttaqin and the good end for such people for god conscious people is paradise first advice fear allah abu zar was not satisfied some more advice o oh prophet see the way the sahabas desire to learn about islam and their questions were so relevant that it has become as facilitating for all of us to adopt this second once again he says please one more advice o oh prophet to which the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said o oh abu zar do the tilawa of the quran and remember allah extensively allatina atainahum alkitaba yatluna haqqa tilawati ulaika yu'minuna bihi wa man yakfur wa man yakfur bihi faulaikum alkasirun those whom we have given them the quran they recited the way it has to be recited they justify the recitation these are the people who believe in it and whoever disbelieves in it they are the losers what is tilawa in the quran is a very comprehensive terminology it means khara means recite read but what is tilawa tilawa is recite understand and implement wa shamsi wa zuha wal qamari da talaha which follows it by the sun when it is bright and by the moon that follows it something which follows something which comes after which is in behind something or in the light of something so when we say tilawa of the quran it means in the light of the quran live our lives follow it implement it kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyadabburu ayatihi this is the quran which you need to to understand to ponder not just to recite not just to memorize quran has a road map for our success in this world and the hereafter and we need to recite it extensively understanding its meaning brothers and sisters one small advice to you read two rukus every day two ains every day with meaning understand it or join classes wherever these quran classes are being conducted try to catch up with two rukus a day within one year you'll complete the entire quran keep a target keep a plan and inshallah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us tremendous rewards allah will bless us with his innumerable bounties and that will be a real source of salvation for you and i third extensively remember allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanallah alhamdulillah allahu akbar astaghfirullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanallah alazim what difficulty it for us to say all this why don't we keep our tongues always moist in the remembrance of allah when death is going to come we do not know let our tongues be let us depart from this life with the tongues with kalama in our mouths how will it happen only when we keep developing that in a habit in such a way that it goes into a subconscious level and death takes place when your man is in a dust subconscious level and what is in the subconscious level will come out in the tongue and we pray to allah to give us that life of iman and a life of death and that can hum, come only with the remembrance of allah it's a very big topic i'm just touching upon number 4 allah subhanahu wa taala has said remain silent as much as possible remain silent as much as possible for shaitan gets frustrated and runs away from people who remain silent speak only when it is required allah subhanahu wa taala says wa khulul linnasi husna speak to the people in a good manner if you do not know how to speak in a good manner without hurting anybody's sentiments stay silent stay quiet when you remain silent shaitan gets frustrated and when shaitan goes away you can do the work of islam today we lack we do more of noise less of action but what is required actions are more necessary than words today and that can happen only when we remain silent we are silent workers number 5 do not laugh extensively dil murda ho jata hai prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said your heart will become numb and dead if you laugh too much not a, laughter is forbidden in islam yes we can be humorous we need to be humorous we need to smile we need to laugh and we should be enjoying the company of our family members of our friends definitely within the parameters of islam humor is most allowed and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to joke and be humorous with the sahabas 
and he used to encourage sahabas also to be cordial and happy and laugh but not laugh extensively we have never seen the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam any time laughing he has smiled but he has never laughed throughout his life he smiled his face was always smiling always speak the truth even though it may be unpalatable call a spade a spade don't hesitate to speak the truth in spite of seeing wrong happening in front of you what is there for me why should i get into the bad books of somebody why should i unnecessarily say all these things and people think negative about me it's okay let them do what they want this attitude is not allowed in islam when you're seeing something wrong speak the truth open up voice your concern let your dissent be noted and recorded and always be truthful ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullaha wa kunu ma sadiqin all those who people all those who believe fear allah and be along with those who are truthful then sahaba abuzar continues on huh? oh allah one more advice oh allah's prophet one more advice oh allah's prophet one more advice how many already been shared with you <clears throat> six have already been i think six have already been spared with you seventh one not to not to fear the blame of the blamer whenever you are speaking the truth don't worry who is blaming you and all that people will be there only to criticize people will be there to pass sarcastic remarks people when they see anything good happens they will become jealous they will not encourage don't worry about them and when you do a little bit of a mistake they will make a big noise about it and particularly when you are doing the work of islam your very folks at home will be the first to comment at you they will be the first to discourage you your friends will discourage you your wife and children will discourage you your relatives and neighbors will discourage you don't worry about all of them continue to work for the cause of islam and ultimately at the end of the end of the day brothers and sisters as youth we have a big responsibility to play in this world we need to harness our energies and channelize them in the best manner possible we should lick up live up to the beautiful labels which allah himself has given us let's reconnect to allah subhanahu wa taala let us get back to him let us forget the past enough water has flown time has just run out when is our time of departing from this world we do not know let us be more responsible let us be more serious let us connect to the book of allah let us engage ourselves in the remembrance of allah let us fear allah let us know that death is a sure reality and let us do things which will be a source of our salvation in paradise as a sal- salvation in the yawmul qiyamah and may allah subhanahu wa taala without punishing us and sending us to jahannam sends us directly into jannat and may allah grant us all jannat al firdaus and may allah subhanahu wa taala help us to work collectively for the cause of islam to establish the deen of islam in this world and that is what is faqiru illallah keeping tawhid risalat and akhirat always in our mind and making sure that we live lives responsibly discharging our duties and responsibilities in the most justifiable and effectible and effective manner and cry to allah in the hours of the night asking allah to forgive our sins and help us to do better work of islam than we did the previous day and may allah subhanahu wa taala grant us success both in this world and the hereafter i'm due to time but anyhow i'm sure this little bit of information which i have shared with you will definitely be beneficial to you and if at all i have made any mistakes may allah pardon and forgive me and if at all i have said something really good and you have heard it brothers and sisters allah says last verse wala takunu kal ladina khalu samina la yasmu fahum la yasmu do not become like those who heard who said we heard but actually did not inna sharra dawab ladina verily the worst creatures in the eyes of allah near allah are the deaf dumb summul bukmul ladina la yaqilun the deaf the dumb who do not understand no we do not belong to that category we have heard it we will reflect upon this we will take it into the bottom of our hearts and manifest it in our personalities in our life that this session of whatever i have shared with you should become most productive and beneficial to each one of us may allah accept rabbana taqabbal minna innaka antas samiul alim wa tub alaina innaka antat tawwabur rahim wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh